it's too far to, to ask for a secular state. Could, could you have a recognition that, it, that, that Iran is an Islamic state, but that all, all religions are, are, everybody has freedom of religion and belief? So why not, not say the first <coughs> bit and say the second bit? Well, but because people are saying that's too far to go. Because, I mean, secular states come in different shapes and sizes I mean, as yeah, well. Yeah, you, yeah. The secular so state of Turkey? You were saying don't wave a red flag to a bull. So I, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, the secular <laughs> state of France? You know, so yeah, I mean, yeah. you, I, I, I don't know that it solves the problem. So yeah, Rob, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think saying freedom of religion or belief for all in accordance with international human rights standards does yeah. actually say a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And that says it briefly. Norway has a state yeah. law, uh, um, religion, exactly. so you know. Yeah. Yeah. May, may also add that in what he's saying, uh, I would advise adding rule of law, uh, mm -hmm. because even if there was, you know, laws today are bad, but even if they observe them as they st as stand today, a lot of the issues we talk about will not be there. So I think uh, emphasis on rule of law and your first rights is a very important element for recommendation. I think another aspect that I want to address is the culture and um, the behavior. So it's not just the law that is the problem in Iran, because even if, as we've all said, even if we change the law, it's um, how the public are reacting and how it's affecting. I mean, it's horrifying to hear that a young child is not being driven in an ambulance because it's discovered she's a Baha'i or it's horrifying to think what's going to happen next in, in a hospital. Are they going to refuse treatment next? I mean, that's a sick public perception that's um, constantly being um, instilled into the population. So it's not just the law. I mean, rule of law is important, but it's not just the law. Yes, yeah. I was wondering if, we, if because you mentioned the media, I was wondering if we could not make a recommendation that is actually not to the Iranian government but rather to the Persian-speaking media, because I think that there is a lot of self-censorship. And I think that people have to come to recognize that there is this self-censorship. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> to really call upon you know, the, the, the media to try to, see, to, to find ways of promoting freedom of religion or belief um, in a more broader manner or trying to remove. Because I think, for example, <clears throat> you know, if there is a human rights violation about you know, the Baha'is, you will get coverage in the Persian-speaking media. But, something, but if there is a false documentary about the Baha'i faith, nobody is going to call a Baha'i to come and explain why this is wrong. Because they will think, oh, no, 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 they're teaching the Baha'i faith, which is exactly what the Iranian government says. So in fact, they're playing into the Iranian government. So I, I think there is a requirement. There, it's not going to happen so so quickly. But I, if we could put a clause for people to start thinking about how they can also improve their own approach, so that will help a lot of changing the culture inside Iran as well. Who is going to pay for that? <coughs> Who is going to support this idea to make Persian? No, the existing media. The existing the media. Look, you re you represent a media. You hear from Pars Television. Yes. I so have. you have a duty and a responsibility yes. to report what you heard yes. and maybe I think it's being suggested that you can your reporting can actually inform the population that's watching you so you have a duty and a responsibility in how you are reporting and the message that you're carrying in your re rep reportage that you're, you're putting together I think that's a really valid point again on the question of executions um, the three conferences that we've had every single one has had a panel on the role and responsibility of media in combating um, the increasing number of executions in, here, in Iran and how can the media actually um, educate the public about what is happening and open up the discourse about executions. And I agree, why, why shouldn't we do the same? Did you want to say something? I think incitement and hatred should be there. It's not only ideological nature of the education system, it's much broader so in, and it's throughout society. And you know I, that I have a clear recommendation. Yes. Whatever slogan you choose, if the system that you can put that slogan into implementation is not clear, it will not be implemented, as the present government is doing. Okay. Therefore, if you say, for example, Iranian, Iran for all Iranians, if you say that uh, equal enjoyment, this will not be... Um, implemented in Iran unless you say, for example, in a federal system in which all the ethnic groups or cities uh, can rule themselves, then there is... Pardon? 
health and diversity. Rich culture, and, rich culture yeah. and diversity. Mm -hmm. Rich culture and diversity. What we've put here is that for all faiths, where all faiths can practice safely and freely, they bring values to a shared moral framework in the public sphere. This creates social cohesion and builds trust and loyalty, which in turn creates security and stability for the society and the state. On the other hand, repression of faith communities can drive them underground, separates them uh, from society, destroys trust and creates conflict. This was made very clear in our conversations with many different religion and belief communities in Iran. All, every single point that we've put here was said to us. They said that, that, that we feel excluded. Um, I mean, I was talking to Hamid um, when we were discussing him participating in here. I sort of came up with this phrase that the Jewish community in Iran live in, a, in some kind of a self-imposed um, social exclusion because it's safer for them to not engage with everything. They, they have, you know, they try and do everything within their own community because that offers them protection rather than engaging with everything. So, and I think that's tragic that a group of Iranians have to impose self-exclusion. To, to survive as a form of protection. Um, so so th basically, the, every single word that we've put here, um, it's come from the feeling portrayed to us from the discussions that we've had, social cohesion, the lack of trust, or the feel that you know they want to be included. Um, I don't know, is, is that a good first paragraph? Or, um, then we add also non-believers as well? We've got non-believers further down. We've, that's just the opening paragraph. Um, and we've, we've condemned discrimination on grounds of religion and belief as a violation of human rights and fundamental freedoms proclaimed in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and enunciated in detail in the International Covenants of Human Rights and identified the main areas concerned, again, as expressed to us, an urgent need of attention. One was the gender issue, one was the ideological education system that hand in hand with media basically brainwashes, social engineering, social and cultural engineering that's going on both openly and stealth, and the right to conversion and recognition. I think the message here today is very clear that we don't talk about recognition. So is that right? Yes. Are we all agreed that we don't yes. mention recognition? Yes. So we don't want to say, as in Indonesia or Bahrain, the Baha'is should have the recognition of the state as a religion. We don't want to say that about we Iran. We say every Iranian is entitled to exercise whatever right they want. That. Absolutely, but also other residents. Yeah. What about Buddhists yes. coming to work in yes. Iran? Yes. <laughs> no, I mean I just said Baha'is as an example All because it's happened in Bahrain and in Indonesia. Entitled. But the right of recognition would be for the Yarasan, for Buddhists, for uh, the Sikhs, for all these different faith groups and the non-believers who live in Iran. But you're saying not to talk about recognition. Recognition can become at all. the grounds of exclusion. Okay. The in, the Especially if you make a list. It's not a function of the state to live a religion or not. Okay. Yeah. Agreed. So it's a function of the state to provide equality and... Uh, the environment for all of them to flourish. Of the faith and the okay, so how, how about conversion? Do we... Um, Chrissy, do you have an opinion on this? The, the, right the Baha'i faith is not recognized yes. in Bahrain, and it's not yet recognized in Indonesia. <laughs> so, <laughs> just to say... Is that, is that a press myth? <laughs> is that a myth that we've read? Apparently, yes. I don't know. <laughs> but it's not, anyway. Okay. Just okay. Add one small thing, yes. that, um, uh, the, that respect for this diversity um, is, uh, I don't know how to word it exactly, but as a condition for leadership among nations. I mean, this is the thing about the context. The, transformative capacity of Iran in the entire Middle Eastern region if it does become a model of pluralism and, and, and tolerance and playing once again to the patriotic sentiments of Iranians to the extent that we want this document to go beyond just our circle of experts Absolutely. to a wider audience, I think that may be a useful... Unicy in that first interview said that they are um, pluralistic in Iran as long as you don't proselytize and as long as you don't start advertising what you're doing. So, yes. As long as you shut up and you're obedient, you shut up we and diversity. Yes. Told we are with the Iranian community. <laughs> Historically, it has been such a tolerant country, mm -hmm. and we would like to see it restored to this model of excellence. You know, and to advance it, really. Yeah. And to so go can beyond. I say, go we've, beyond. we've got a clause yeah. in here that was says, old well, model. Wasn't that good we've got a clause here that says, take all appropriate yeah. measures model to combat tolerance. intolerance. Do I include something like that in, in there? Mm. I, I think what... Um, 
Nazila said as well, incitement to hatred uh, is one language. Incitement to discrimination and is hatred. Is that preamble actually. or is it operative? I think maybe operative. I'm sorry, I. I it's it within the education. No, this is within oh, the education, I see, I see. the incitement to hatred. Um, yes, two minutes. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, you delayed us with your internet. I want an extra five minutes. <laughs> Very nice. We'll have to clean up and there's okay. people who are... So, okay, so incite, incitement um, and hatred. Um, you, you said that about ideological nature that I've put in the education system. Does it have system. to be these three no, headings? No, no, Because, it I mean, I think the point It's just of, these, these were identified yeah. through our conversation, so I mean, something more that. about the, you know, some of the, the grave immediate violations that includes execution, well, I've, torture I've got, and imprisonment. I've got imprisonment and executions. Okay. So maybe after set. that can be this... Uh, pervasive incitement and hatred across all levels of society because it's not only in education. So the very first thing that we're going to say will ask for equal enjoyment here. Respect for, because even the existing laws, if they enforce that, for instance, they have the right to counsel, they have the limit to uh, incarceration, <laughs> all these things that Absolutely. have been totally ignored mm -hmm. for years and years. If there is the slightest respect for the constitution of Islamic Republic, Article 38 says you cannot torture, full stop, it's yeah. not subject to yeah. And the whole, the whole thing is just, so we have to bring that home, saying that you have to respect your own laws at least, that's a minimum standard. Yes. Okay, so I've got freedom of religion and belief for all, instead of recognition. So instead of saying recognition, we just say freedom of religion and belief for all. Mm -hmm. and, and then the question in gender issues is, do you start going into the, within the family and within communities, or is this what the government can do? Because, you know, you, that's, I think it's valid to have a, a manifesto for what communities should do themselves. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure. Don't give, don't give a weapon for the state to attack the community when the community is already being persecuted attacked. Okay. and attacked. Um, that's, the, it's not the right the time the to, question or the women, context. The question of women is something that um, women of religious groups with under the Islamic law is, is just very complicated. And it's sort of... In, mixed with culture and tradition and sort of all of that. So it's really difficult, but, um, it's but edu again, it comes back to educating the public and in teaching tolerance. So not imposing religious laws on those who aren't believers is one element of it, and not having religiously based laws as the grounds for wider enforcement. Exactly, it's the point. It's, if you don't change the law, how you, I mean, it's, it's important what you said, that without changing the Sure, it's a second the sentence, absolutely. Uh, saying she uh, mm -hmm. and excluding all of the other other groups. Yes. Changing the law is important, but uh, the interpretation of law I think is much important than the changing law. Because I'm originally from Turkey and I'm Kurdish origin. So uh, when I look at the Turkish constitution, actually there's no any discriminative provision or article in the Turkish constitution, but how the Turkish state interpreted the constitution and the exactly, legislation, exactly. how they discriminate the Kurds or other religious minorities in Turkey. So this is the issue. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, for example, it's the same uh, with, uh, about the secularism. <coughs> yes. When you look at Article 2 of the Turkish constitution, it says the Turkish state is secular and uh, also holding the uh, principle of rule of law. But in practice, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. And still, we have lots of religious minorities issues, human rights problems, not just on Turks and uh, in Kurds, and also other minorities as well. So interpretation of law, I think, is more important than the changing law. And of course, they are connected each other, strongly connected each other. But um, I think you should emphasize okay. the force of uh, interpretation. How, how would I word it? Application. 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 How would I word it? Effective interpretation. Let's say effective interpretation. And also, I think another issue, which is when we talk about the rule of law, 
and you need to have effective checks and balance mechanisms to make sure about the rule of law, the principle, principle, fundamental criteria of rule of law. If you don't have any effective checks and balance mechanisms, again, it doesn't work. Okay. Rule of law or just is going to be in the paper. I think 1A works okay. I would just, personally, I would reverse the reverse the it. Order. And um, I'm not sure about B at all. I don't know what B means. So uh, 1A is particular attention and B is stop discriminatory practices. Uh, and then include something about application. Okay. But I don't know what to educate against traditional and cultural misunderstandings. Oh, well, because... Um but on the, what, the, the kind, or kind, in relation well, to what, or it's, 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 it's so vague. I heard from the Sunni community over and over and again that their problem is not just being Sunni, but it is being a woman within the region with all the tribal con and culture and everything that goes with it. So it's not but just ban tradition and culture. <laughs> because <laughs> no, there's also can, good tradition But you can culture. educate. Harmful you can educate. Practice. Harmful traditional practice makes sense. Yeah, there's a new general comment. We can take language from that. Yeah. The, CEDO, the new general recommendation from CEDO. The that should be rather emphasizing of our religion and Christian belief, etc., etc., should emphasize of the rights of the people regardless of their religious identity. Because if we do that, they, they are not recognizing any religion of the <coughs> But we are emphasizing that the people as human beings should be respected regardless of whatever they, they believe or religion. The recognition. Okay. I'm very grateful for all your input. I'm very mindful of the time. We're just over seven o'clock, and I know you all have to be places if you're not coming to dinner with us um, at Gallery. <laughs> so thank you very much for all your inputs. I'm very grateful for all of you. Um, since you are all experts in the field, if I may, um, when we've drafted something, um, I'll just send it for general comments and um, hopefully we can have something that we can use. I know next week there's a panel on minorities um, at Human Rights Council on violence against minorities. It's on 25th of November, so it's for that purpose. But I don't think we'll have something before that. But it would be good to have something that we can all use if we are going to say that we will speak up for each other and in support of each other. I won't say defense because we're not victims. In support. <laughs> in support. Thank you very much, all of you, and thank you and to my thanks panel. thanks to you and thank Dr. Dodger for all your efforts.